Yeah, White Chocolate opened in 1998. Two brothers opened it, uh, Rod and Neil Smith. And at the I think at the time, one of them was still attending Fort Hayes. I was 16, I think, when the shop opened. And they had a uh, Osiris shoe company had just be started becoming a big name in, in uh, skateboarding shoes back then. And they were doing a tour, so they ended up getting them to stop in Hayes and do a big demo and a contest. And um, we were, you know, we were like, oh, we want to ride for the shop, you know, we want to get sponsored. And started actually working for the shop, I think, in. 99 or 2000, um, when I graduated high school, uh, and had always helped with events and just kind of hung out at the shop, just helped around the shop and everything, and basically, you know, just wanted to be a part of what they were doing, and wanted them to be a part of like what was already established here at the time in skateboarding. Um, so, you know. Me and my crew were kind of, you know, I think really made the shop what it is and or like later what it became. Um, there's also a big following, you know, uh, there's a lot of Salinas skaters that were uh, following the shop as well. The shop first opened, it was on 8th Street. Um, oh, it was 333 8th Street. Um, Really small store. I'm not sure the square footage, but it was probably like maybe a third of the size of what it is now in this sh in this location. Um, and then 2002, they moved over here uh, to Main Street, and they were here well since then. And then 2005, Rod, the owner, ended up starting a shop in Lawrence, Kansas, and I ended up taking over this one to manage, like he was still owner. Um, so I've been managing this one since 2005. You know, and we always, our old crew, we, we always, we kind of knew it was just kind of inevitable that, you know, people move on and with this type of lifestyle and like culture, you really, to be doing it, to be like, to have a store and to be successful, you have to, be immersed into the subculture of skateboarding, um, or at least maybe not not you know necessarily have to skate, but at least be into the lifestyle and know what it's about, know the mentality, and just really almost be into it for the love. But as far as the shop closing, um, I think just we're kind of simplifying things. We're not closing because of you know people aren't coming, you know. It's not because of people aren't coming in and we're not, you know, selling stuff. It's because of other, like, personal private reasons, more or less. Uh, our customers are really unique, I think. Um, we get a wide variety of people that have came in over the years. Um, and it, and they're, in my opinion, the, the best customers. I think we just have, like, the most loyal of customers, and I think with with the subculture of lifestyle of like skateboarding and action sports and stuff that you just, you get people that are, they're just really stoked to come into your shop, you know? Like come in and see that there's this kind of alternative lifestyle. Um, and yeah, we have everybody from, I mean, little kids, you know, just starting out skateboarding or just like, you know, certain brands like Vans or something. Um, all the way up to, I mean, we've had, like, grandmas, you know, shop here, like, 60, 70 years old, um, that like our girls selection, like our tops and some of the jeans and stuff. Um, yeah, my parents shop here, I mean, and they're in their 50s. Um, but yeah, really diverse customer base, and the customers are awesome. That's that's what I'm gonna miss most about the job is like the customers and kids and stuff. We usually have most of the time like three employees on staff, like me, and then I usually have one or two girls. Um, 
and like one of the one of the shop kids, like one of the one of the kids that rides for the shop, I usually have um, just working because it's it's good to have somebody that really knows about skateboarding and like the hard goods side. But since we do mostly clothing, um, it's easier having people with like more better fashion sense. But usually we keep like three or four on staff. Usually, for the most part. Um, yeah, since this store is closing, we're basically consolidating everything to the Lawrence shop. Um, uh, mostly the guys, I don't think closing the shop will affect the skateboarding scene. Um, maybe, maybe a little bit. I think, a, I think a lot of kids started skating because they've had exposure because there was a store here. But we had a pretty good skate scene. We had the skate park before a shop even opened. So, I mean, it was, what, 96, we got the skate park. And, I mean, you have, you don't just get a skate park. It's like you have to have years of people skateboarding and it being an interest before you get a park dedicated to that. So there was a pretty strong scene up through the 90s um, before the shop opened. And it's usually a shop like this would open be to meet the demand of skateboarding. It's, I don't really think it's the other way around. Um, I don't know how it could be successful without, you know, it's like, um, so I think it, I think the skate scene will keep going.